So welcome. This is our first backbend and inversions class through this medium. I'm happy that we at least have this medium and we can still do this. So for those who have never tried this class before, this is the class that, well, it's basically my interpretation of it, but it's inspired on the class that uh, they teach in New York, where I did my 300 hour training last summer, well, two summers ago. And this is uh, Jared McCann's practice. Uh, he used it in order to use his strength at the back of the body to open up the front of the body. It's very important with all the back bends that we're actually protecting our back rather than bending it and breaking it. We want to use all the muscles at the back of the body to really contract and open up in a healthy way, in a secure way. So through this class, we're doing different drills to open up the front of the body. And we're also gaining strength in the deltoids, in the shoulders, so that, and of course core, so that we can hold inversions, whether that is um, shoulder stand, handstand, and well, deep core strength will help you throughout your practice with everything that you do. Not, even on, not only on the mat, but also off the mat. Okay, so we'll start right away. Just a brief introduction in case people are still uh, signing in. We start with the five Tibetan rites. So the five Tibetans, uh, that's Tibetan yoga. It's five exercises that um, are quite quick, and specific. They help build proprioception, so awareness of the body in space, and also they work with the fascial lines, so the connective tissue that holds muscles together, muscle to bone. We're working with the elasticity of that connective tissue. Once uh, we get that elasticity, then we can see real changes with the body within a few months. So we'll go straight into it. Uh, if it's the first time that you're trying this, take it easy. It's 21 repetitions of each exercise, but you can do 11, you can do less. So first exercise, the first Tibetan. You stand up tall, you open up your arms, pull your shoulders back, shoulder blades down. Just make sure that you have some space around you. Look at your right fingertips and start spinning around yourself. You can go slowly, but the intention is that once you know what you're doing, you go real fast. So it's 21 spins around yourself. Again, if you're not used to this, take it easily, do less. Otherwise, go as fast as you can. You want to build proprioception, so awareness of your body in space, and also you want to work with the fascia, so you want to use that rebound of going really fast. Once you're done, find your balance and come to lie down on your back. So in between all of the exercises, we go for Shavasana, lying down. In Tibetan yoga, it's fast movements and then you stop and you breathe. Throughout the movements, of course, you should also breathe, but it's not so much about synchronizing the breath with the movement. It's just about doing it fast so that then you can stop be still and allow the breath to integrate the practice. As you're lying down in Shavasana, allow the whole body to rest, but don't allow your mind to go away from the present moment. Stay with your body, stay with your breath. As you breathe, think of your spine lengthening. And we're using Shavasana throughout this class so that we actually use it as an extension so that we breathe space into the vertebra. So keep thinking of the tailbone, the bottom of the spine, moving away from you towards the feet and the crown of the head moving towards the back so that you're lengthening the body. We'll now move to our second Tibetan. So lying down, you'll bring your legs together, feet together and you point your feet. You have two options. You can either just bring the legs up over the pelvis and then bring them down, or you can bring the legs all the way up and then go back, just like in Halasana, and then come back down. I don't know how far you can see me, but it's very easy. You bring the legs up and then down. Maybe you keep the pelvis down or you bring the pelvis over the shoulders and then you go back. 
It's 21 repetitions, and again, once you know what you're doing, go fast. Go as fast as you can, keep the feet pointed, keep the legs together, keep the legs straight. Keep the lower belly in as you're bringing the legs down, keep the chin in to really flex the body. So we're working with the flexion of the front of the body, so that indeed you start working with the fascia, the connective tissues. Keep flexing the front of the body, keep the chin in and feel the stretch of the back of the body. 21 repetitions is the maximum and once you're done, you lie down. Again, go with your own pace, especially if you've never tried this before. Keep the shoulder blades down the back, keep the lower belly engaged and once you're done, once you feel that you've had enough for this exercise today, lie down and relax. Relax the muscles of the face and use your breath to relax the whole body. The five Tibetans is a great workout on its own, so you can just take 10 minutes every day to do the five Tibetans and you have a whole body workout. You work with your spatial awareness, but also you get to wake the whole body up and stretch the whole body up. We'll move to the third Tibetan. For the third Tibetan, you'll come to a kneeling position. So kneeling on your knees, press your knees down, keep the knees hip distance apart. We will untuck the toes, so have the tops of the feet on the ground, keep your arms by your sides, pull your shoulders back, your shoulder blades down the back, and keep your chin in. You want to flex your belly, so pull lower belly in and up, keep the rib cage in, pull it up, and with a strong body, just like a plank, you go back all the way that you can, and then you pick yourself up through the chest, pick the chin up, and you go forward. So it's 21 repetitions. This is the third Tibetan. Keep pressing the knees down and the feet down. And again, don't be afraid to go fast. You might lose your balance, but that's good. Once you find that edge and you lose your balance, then you're teaching yourself where that edge is. And you're teaching yourself to hold yourself up strong and to actually, with time, stop yourself right at that edge. So go as fast as you can once you know what you're doing. Keep the arms by your sides, the hands flexed, the shoulders back, the shoulder blades down, keep the body strong as a plank, and then pick yourself up through the chest. All the time, keeping the lower belly in and up. Keep the glutes active. 21 is the maximum. And once you're done, come to lying down. There's a lot of people who do this practice every day. There's people who wake up and they start spinning around themselves. Just checking everything is okay. So hello everyone again. So we have started with the five Tibetans. We have done the first one, the second one, the third one, and now we're going for the fourth one. So come to sitting down and point your feet. Bring your hands by your sides. So keeping the legs straight, we press down into the hands, we pick up the chest. Open up the feet hip distance apart, we're coming to a reverse table. So press down into the knuckles, push the feet down, pick up the pelvis, pick up the chest, pick up the chin, and then chin in, come back, point the feet, legs straight. Press into the feet, reach up through the pelvis, and then reach back through the pelvis. Up and back. Once you know what you're doing, go fast. Keep pressing the hands down, keep the arms strong and straight, legs straight when you come down and pushing into the arms. So as you come back, you really flex. As you come up, you really open up, push the pelvis up, really use that thrust of the pelvis up, the chest up, the chin back. 21 is the maximum. Again, go as fast as you can and then come to rest. So allegedly there's a lot of health benefits that come from this practice, from Tibetan yoga in general. It reminds me a bit of the current trend of Kundalini yoga because it's fast movements and then you feel that rush and then you breathe and you allow the body to integrate the practice. 
So that's what you want to do. You want to rest completely in between the exercises and use the breath as a means to cleanse the body. The five Tibetans are said to reverse the aging process. So do these exercises every day and you'll see color in your hair again, you'll lose some wrinkles and you'll feel young again. So it's a great way to take advantage of the quarantine to get out of it younger rather than a month older. All right. So the last Tibetan, up dog to downward facing dog. We will tuck the toes down, however. So it's an up dog with the toes tucked down. We pick up the chest, pull the shoulders back, the shoulder blades down. So press the knuckles down, push the chest forward, thrust the pelvis forward, pick up the chin and then push the arms down and flex as you come back. For the down dog, you really push the shoulders back to again work with that fascia, with the line at the back of the shoulders. So forward and back, 21 times. Once you know what you're doing, go fast. Keep the lower belly in, keep the shoulder blades down, and then as you push to down dog, you elevate the scapula and you push the chest towards the feet. Keep pressing the arms down, arms straight, legs straight, feet tucked under, keep the lower belly in and go as fast as you can. Chin up every time you go for up dog, and then chin in for down dog. So really flip your hair up and back. Once you're done with 21, come to lying down on your back. So we've made it. This is the practice of the five Tibetans. This is our warm-up. And we'll go for another warm-up. Some quick sun salutations that will work with our extensions and our flexions. So we want to build that strength at the core so that our back bends are safe, so that we use our strength to open up our chest rather than just collapse in the lower back or in any part of the body. And then we also build all the core strength for all the inversions and some proprioception, some awareness of the body in space, which will be useful for all balances, whether on your feet or on your hands. So let's come up to standing. We'll go for our specific sun salutations. There's our variations for the hot yoga practice. So you want to stand at the back of the mat for these sun salutations and you want to open up the feet hip distance apart. You press the feet down onto the ground and throughout the sun salutations you have that awareness of pressing the feet down so that you activate the thighs, the glutes, that's your stability. You want to feel that you're pressing the feet down so that you lift from the pelvic floor and that you're, lower, you're pulling lower belly in and up, ribs in and up, holding everything in. Whenever we're extending the spine, you keep the lower belly in and you lift up, pull the shoulder blades down. And whenever you're flexing the spine, again, lower belly in and up, ribs in, shoulder blades down. Okay, so then we'll bring the arms up. Reach the arms up. You can bring the hands together or arms um, shoulder width apart. Widen the shoulder blades, whether the hands are together or not. Press the feet down, pull the lower belly up, up in and then it's nine movements. So we start with the right foot into a high lunge. So number one, right foot forward, long step. Press the right foot down. Number two, extend. Pull the chest up, pull the shoulder blades down. Number three, pull lower belly in and flex head towards the knee. Number four, press feet down and reach the arms up. Number five, bring the knee down, low lunge. Number six, open up the chest, pull shoulder blades down, lower belly. Number seven, press the feet down, pull lower belly in, flex. Number eight, press feet down and come up to high lunge right away. And number nine, come back to the back of your mat. Left foot. One, left foot forward. Two, open up. Three, flex. Keep pressing feet down. Four, come up, high lunge. Five, low lunge. Six, lower belly in, push the hips forward. Seven, flex, keep the hips pressing forward. Eight, press feet down and come up. And nine, come back. Right foot. One, two, we're picking up the pace. Three, four, 
five, six, seven, keep the glutes active, eight, and nine. Left, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, up and back. Right foot, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, up and back, left foot, one, extend, flex, come up, come down, extend, flex, come up and back, right foot, one, two, three, keep the lower belly in and lift up, come down, but keep lifting up through the belly, flex, come up and back, left foot, one, two, three, four, five, Open, flex, up and back. Right foot, one, two, three, four, five. Keep pressing feet down, keep the glutes active. Push the come up and back. Left foot, one, two, right glute forward, left hip back. Come down, keep pushing right hip forward, left hip back. Come up, last time. And one, two, three, Four, five, six, seven, up, last foot, left foot, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, up, and back, stand still, so bring your arms by your sides, just like a standing Shavasana, press the feet down, feel a lift from the pelvic floor, and breathe. Okay, so now we're warm. In between all of the drills, all of the exercises, we'll find this position, standing up tall. Use your breath to really calm the body down. Beautiful. Okay, so you can stand there and watch what's coming up. So we're working towards drawbacks. Um, Actually, first we'll do our delta strength. So we're working for the delta strength. So we have three options. Number one is doing it from the downward facing dog. What you want is actually to find this extension of the shoulders, so an elevation of the scapula. So reaching the shoulders up and down. Keep the shoulder blades apart, but keep reaching the arms up and done. So this is the exercise and these are the push-ups that we'll be doing. So first option to do them from the downward facing dog. If you know the later options you can go for uh, the other options but we can all start with downward facing dog first. So find yourself in a downward facing dog, widen the feet, keep the feet keep distance apart or slightly wider, press the hands down, widen the shoulder blades, Keep the lower belly in, find distance from the pubis to the lower belly. You can always bend the knees to have some more access to the pelvis, send the six bones up. And then from here we'll do our presses. So push and extend and then bring the ears closer to the hands. Push shoulders closer to the ears and then ears closer to the hands. Widen the shoulder blades and then go fast. 25, 24, 23, 22, 21. 20, 19, 18, 17, 16, 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, and 1. Okay, we come to standing. Shavasana. If you're not used to these exercises, you will feel it at the deltoid, at this guy here, this muscle at the back of the shoulder, at the upper back and that muscle is what's going to hold you up in any inversion and that muscle is also what's going to help you to squeeze and open up the upper body for back bends. So to keep working with that we'll do it in dolphin. So number two is from dolphin. You'll bring the hands shoulder width apart, bring the elbows down and widen the shoulder blades. So make sure that the elbows 
are shoulder width apart and you press the inner hands down and the outer elbows down. You bring the hips up and you push the, the shoulders towards the feet. You can always bend the knees. If it's too much, you can even have the knees down. What we want again is this scapula elevation. So come to this position, get ready, knees down or legs up, and then push the shoulders close to the feet first, so really open up the shoulders, widen the shoulder blades, bend the knees if need, and begin. Elevate the scapula and then shoulders to ears. 25, 24, 23, 22, 21, 20, 19, 18, 17, 16, 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, and 1. Slowly count them. Okay, and then stand up. Okay, so stand up still, think of more length from the pubis to the crown of the head. Send your six bones down into the heels. We'll do two more of each, but I'll give the variations now. So you can always go back to the first one. You can go back to the down dog. Remember, you're pushing away, and that's the same idea with the wall. So if you want to, come close to the wall, and you have the option of coming to an l shape handstand. So bringing the feet up and coming to an L, and then from here doing the presses, or you can come to a handstand. So you can jump up against the wall and relax your head. So you're pressing the hands down, hands shoulder width apart, widening the shoulder blades, keeping the lower belly in, using the fingers as spiders to really pull into the palms, press down into the knuckles, come up, and then lengthen the legs, point the feet, relax the head. Okay, and then we can start from here. So choose down dog, L shape, down dog, handstand, or handstand. So make sure that from the hands to the hips, you're a straight line, whatever the option is, and then begin. 25, 24, 23, 22, 21, 20, 19, 18, 17, 16, 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, keep the legs together if you're on the wall, keep the feet together if you're on the wall, keep the lower belly in, relax the head, press into the hands, and then maybe find some air time before coming down. And then come to standing. Number four of six. So we've done one down dog, one dolphin, another down dog or handstand, and now we're doing another dolphin or a scorpion pose. So you can see first, again, stand still and breathe. You can do your dolphin again, like we said, with the knees down or with the legs up. You can also do the dolphin with the feet up the wall. And again, press, 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 making sure that from the elbows to the hips you're a straight line, the shoulders are not moving towards the hands. Or you can come to a scorpion variation. So either again from forearms or handstand. I'll show the handstand variation where you can do the same with the forearms on the ground. This time we want to open up the chest so it will feel different, but it's a progress, so there's no rush. So if you're here, then you press the hands or the forearms on the ground, you gaze towards the wall, you pull the lower belly in, straight arms or forearms on the ground, and then you hold up. Once the legs are up, you can straighten the legs. We don't bend the knees for this exercise. We press down to the knuckles and we gaze at the wall. So choose to do dolphin like we did before, or do it here. So 25, 24, 23, keep gazing at the wall if you're doing scorpion, shorter blades towards the sacrum. Keep the lower belly in. 15, 14, 13, 12, you press and push strong, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, and 1. Press into the hands, find some balance, push, and then come down. Again, stand up and breathe. We have one more of each. But in the meantime, we're doing standing Shavasana. Press the feet down, send the sits bones down, pull the pubis in, send it up, lower belly in, up, ribs in and up. And remember these actions because that's what you want from your down dog or from your dolphin or from your handstand. You want to keep these locks active. 
they're called bandhas. So these energetic locks, we can find them through these muscular engagements. Okay, number five. You remember the options? Down dog or handstand or L shape. Remember from the hips to the palms, you're a straight line and you're pushing the shoulders forward to open up. Find your variation. You can come one arm's distance away from the wall or find what works for you. The reason why we do one arm's distance away is to actually be slightly away from the wall so that then with the presses, eventually you can do everything away from the wall. So push into the arms, widen the shoulder blades, relax the head, whatever you're doing. Point the feet if you're in a handstand, push into the arms, pull the lower belly in, keep the legs together if you're in a handstand. And begin, press 25, 24, 23, 22, keep pushing, push strongly, keep the arms straight, 20, 19, 18, 17, 16, 15, go fast and go strong. 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, and 1. Press into the arms, maybe find some air time, keep the lower belly in, and then come down slowly. Stand up, slow, tall. Okay, last one. Remember your options. You can go for the dolphin variation. Knees can also be on the ground. With time you get tired, which is normal. So knees can be on the ground and you press. Or you can do the same with the legs up the wall. Or you can do it in a forearm stand or a handstand with the body in a scorpion position. So if you're in dolphin, the head is relaxed. If you're in a scorpion, then you're pulling the shoulder blades in, shoulder blades towards the sacrum, and you open up the head. The, you bring the head towards the wall, you open up the chest. So hands on the ground, again one arm's distance away from the wall, with time you'll see what distance works for you. But you want to be slightly away so that then with time you have that distance to do the presses away from the wall. Get ready, press into the arms, strong straight arms, widen the shoulder blades and come up. Straighten the legs, point the feet, gaze at the wall, push into the arms, again care if you're in a scorpion, pull the lower belly in, Straighten the legs if you're in a scorpion, point the feet and start 25, 24, 23, 2, 1, 20, 19, 18, 17, 16, push hard, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, keep the lower belly, keep the feet pointed, keep the legs together, maybe find some air time, and then push to calm down. Feel free to hold the handstands for a few seconds. Just make sure that the whole thing is controlled. Okay, great job. So I've been doing this practice for over a, well, I was doing it for over a year. Now it's not really in my daily practice, but I was doing it every other day for a year and I really saw the results. We're using our body strength to really open up the body and to find that balance, to find that strength. Now we'll go for our drop backs. So now is the time. So drop backs, um, that's the idea of, well, keeping the lower belly in, picking up the chest, and with time what you'll be able to do is to press and go all the way back, keeping the lower belly in, so that you come to the ground, and then even pushing to come up with control. So to work towards that, we'll use the wall, if you already know how to walk down the wall, you can start with that. Otherwise, we'll do different drills. So if you already have um, drop back in your practice, then work with the wall first, just so that you control it, you start walking down the wall. Otherwise, we'll start with bringing our hands to the lower belly, to the lower ribs. We'll keep the elbows in. We'll start with the feet hip distance apart. We'll open up the chest, pull the shoulder blades down the back. So shoulders back, shoulder blades down the back. And then we'll start with the chin. So keeping the lower belly in, we start with the chin. Press the feet down, inhale, pick up the chin, and exhale, shoulders back, shoulder blades down, bring the chin down. Keep the lower belly in, use your hands to pull everything up. So pull the lower belly away from the pubis to find some length in the lower back. Pull the shoulder blades down, and then once you find your position, breathe for three, 
two, and one. Press into the feet, keep the lower belly strong, and come up with control. Take three breaths. Three long, deep, nourishing breaths. Okay, number two. Again, if you want to work with the wall, go to the wall. Otherwise, same exercise with the feet wider apart. So mat distance apart. The small distance of the mat, of course. Same exercise with the feet wider apart. So press down into the feet. Feel the thighs working, feel the glutes working. So pick up the glutes. Keep the hands there and then pick everything up. So this movement of sucking everything in and picking it up, we use our hands to help so that our lower back is long, so that we'll teach ourselves to use our deep core strength. So pull everything up, pick up the chin, and then exhale, chin up, shoulders back, shoulder blades down. Again, press down into the feet, keep the heart shining, keep the shoulder, shoulder blades in and towards the ribs. Keep the lower belly in and towards the lower ribs. Keep the lower ribs in and towards the chest. Press down into the feet, keep the lower belly in and inhale, come up. Bring the arms by your sides and breathe. Okay, number three. So same thing with the arms up. So remember the hands at the lower belly and picking everything up. Just a reminder, these drills are quite um, intense. So if you've never done this before, you can skip a repetition or you can take it easy. You don't need to go as deep as you can and you can also go for a previous variation. So you can bring your hands to the lower belly in again to make sure that you're pulling everything up and if you feel any discomfort in the lower back, then stay with that length so that you open up through the upper back until you teach yourself to use the deep core so that the lower back does not feel any pain. With time, there's no pain. So number three, arms up, press the feet down, reach up through the arms, and then exhale, chin up, and then hands back. Find your limit and breathe. Press the feet down, glutes towards the kidneys, kidneys towards the lower ribs, lower ribs in and up. Chest up, shoulder blades down, take another breath. And then inhale, come up, exhale, arms by your sides. Okay, breathe in stillness. We're using Shavasana to breathe. Okay, and then from standing Shavasana, widen the feet. Press the outer feet down, press the heels down, suck the lower belly in and up, ribs in and up. So now the feet are much distance apart and we bring the arms up, we reach up through the arms, pick up the chin and then exhale, chin back, arms back. Keep pressing the feet down, keep the glutes active, glutes strong and up. Take three breaths and then press the feet down and come up. Okay, stand still. Number five, we'll start using the wall. So we'll find a distance of, a distance of one arm's distance from the wall. And then we have the feet hip distance apart first. Press down into the feet, press strongly down to feel the glutes lifting up. Suck the lower belly in and lift up the ribs in and lift up. And then from here, same exercise like we did before, but we'll bring the hands to the wall. And once the hands touch the wall, we lift the heels up to open up through the chest. So really bring the elbows in to open up the shoulders and the upper back. So inhale, bring the arms up, gaze up, and then exhale, hands back. Once the hands touch the wall, then you pick up the heels, elbows in, and you push the chest up and breathe for three. Keep the lower belly in, four, two. Keep the glutes lifting up, four, one. Slowly come up and then bring the heels down. So it's easier to bring one arm up at the time, but with time you want to bring both arms up at the same time. You also don't want to collapse on the side that you're not using. So you don't want to bring one arm off the wall and then collapse on the other side. If you're doing that, then 
teach yourself to really sacular belly in, lift up, and then alternate the arms so that you're not always coming up the same way until you find that strength so that you come off the wall with both arms. It's not just strength, it's also in your mind. So pressing down into the feet, glutes up, engaging everything to come up with control and to come down slowly. Number six, open up the feet wider apart. When the arms are, the legs are wider apart, then the heads of the femur bones, they come out of the way and you can actually find a deeper bend. At the same time, it's easy to collapse at the lower back. When we're bending, the lower back is already in a back bend. So always teach yourself to lift up through the glutes, sacular belly, lift up so that you're using the deep core and you're not collapsing the lower back because we will bend through the lower back, but we also want to bend through the whole body using the strength of the deltoids that we built before and also the strength of the middle back so the whole back is working so that we have a, a, a uniform curve through the spine. Okay. So press down into the feet, wider feet apart, inhale the arms up and exhale hands to the wall. Lift up the heels, pick up the chest. If you want to start walking the hands down, then do it. Eventually, you can come all the way down, but there's no rush. So once you're at that place where you can bring the hands to the ground, you want the wrists close to the wall, the chest to the wall, the armpits to the wall, the neck to the wall, and you breathe. Pressing the balls of the feet down, pulling the lower belly in. Okay, and then to come up, you keep pressing the feet down, activate the glutes, and you come up with control and you bring the heels down blessed. Breathe in standing Shavasana. Number seven. So if you're comfortable with walking down the wall, do that again. If that didn't feel right, then we can do the camel drill. So feet hip distance apart, elbows in. Remember you can skip a repetition and go back to something else that works for you. If your arms are in camel, press the feet down, feel the glutes lifting up, so squeeze your glutes, pull the lower belly in, pick up the chest, elbows in, shoulder blades down the back. Pick up the chest, pick up the chin, find your camel and breathe for three. Keep pressing feet down, activate the glutes for two. And one, press down into the feet, pull our belly in and come up slowly, arms by your sides. Number eight, again you can walk down the wall. Eventually you can do 11 walk downs and walk ups and then even drop downs and drop backs. And come back up. All right. So if you want to do the camel again, now with the feet wider apart, because it gives you a different sensation, press into the balls of the feet, press into the heels, lift the glutes up, bring the hands to the lower back, elbows in. This variation also helps you to make sure that the lower back is long. So suck lower belly in, lift up, and then pick up the chin, start from the head, pull the head back, use the deltoids, use the middle back, use the lower back, keep pressing the feet down, Four, three, keep the glutes active, four, two, keep breathing, four, one, press the feet down to come up, slowly, arms by your sides. So what happens with the breath is that if you come to that edge, it can be psychological again, and you can tell yourself that, oh, I can't breathe, but it could also be that you're straining too much so you can back off a bit so that you are able to breathe. It's easier to breathe out, so if you feel like you can't breathe, try to exhale and then look for the inhale. But it's also a good idea to take it easy, to start with a previous variation or with not going as deep so that you make sure that you're breathing and then slowly move so that all the engagements are happening and you are in control of your breath. Number nine, okay, so we're already warm, so if you want to start dropping back, you can do drop backs, 
of the wall, or you can use the wall again. So using the wall, again, one arm distance away. If you're scared because it feels like too far, you can come closer. It's just that you won't really be able to walk down, but you can have the hands at the wall and really push the chest up to open up the upper back, especially if you feel any, any, feel any lower back strain, then that's a good variation. So actually I can show that. So number nine, you can come closer to the wall if you want, feet in any variation, keep the stance or wider apart, press the feet down, activate the glutes, suck your belly in and up, stand sits bones down, pick up the pubics, pubis, pick up the floating ribs, pick up the chest, inhale the arms up, reach up, and then exhale, hands to the wall. So maybe you're far away to start walking down, or you're not that far, pick up the heels, pick up the chest, and then straighten the arms slightly, slightly more at least. Keep the elbows in so that you're working with the shoulders. If the elbows splay out, then you won't be able to open up the shoulders. So pull the shoulder blades down, allow the head to go back and breathe. Four, three, keep pressing the feet down, lift the glutes. Four, two, keep the lower ribs lifting up. Four, one, and then camp. So you can keep working close to the wall like that. If you feel any shoulder, uh, restriction, then you can do the next drill. So number 10, again remember, eventually you want to be walking down the wall, but if you want to try this, then bring the hands to the wall, walk slightly back, and then maybe we'll come closer to the wall again. So arms, they can come higher, especially if you're more limited with your shoulder mobility, and then with time you can walk the hands uh, lower. And then exhale, pull the push the shoulders down, widen the shoulder blades, and push down. So again, if you're comfortable, walk the hands down to bring the chest down, and you can walk the feet forward slightly so that you feel that the hips are over the feet. Pick up the chin, gaze up, and then push the chest towards the wall. Four, three. If you're comfortable, pull the shoulder blades together now, pick up the chin, and push the inner shoulder blades towards the wall. Four, two. Breathe into the shoulders, four, one, lower belly in and push to come up. Okay. Breathe. Last one, number 11. Okay. So if you're working with drop backs, you can do a drop back, a free drop back. If you're scared, then don't do it. There's no need to die. So widen the feet and press the feet down. You can use the wall. So lower belly in, ribs in, press the feet down, inhale the arms up, reach up, and exhale, arms back, gaze back, press down into the feet. If you're off the wall, you can stay here. If you want to bring the hands to the ground, keep the lower belly in, the ribs in, and bring the hands towards the mat. You will have to bend the knees and move the hips forward so that the hands can come back. Once the hands are on the ground, then you can walk the hands back, maybe lift the heels to make it easier, or move some weight towards the feet, press down into the feet, keep the lower belly in, push into the inner feet, into the outer feet, and come up, hopefully more gracefully than I did. I was thinking that the other way to come down is to come down. So if you're in a, in a wheel, then you can of course just lie down, and then come back to standing. Okay, good job. So we did our 11 exercises and we have some more time. So we'll just do um, a couple more. Usually there's two rounds, so we're going to repeat the whole thing. But because these um, practices are just for one hour, we won't be able to repeat the whole thing. So the deltoid pushes and the drop backs. We'll just do one of uh, each. So one down dog again or handstand. So remember the down dog, it presses and the handstand or the down dog with the legs up the wall. So find your position and do it because the second round feels different because of everything that we've been working. So point the feet, relax the head, push into the arms, pull the lower belly in, and push 25, 24, 23, 22, 21, 20, 19, 18, 17, 16, 15, 14, 30, keep the lower belly in, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, and 1. Point the feet, pull the lower belly in, find some balance, 
and then come down and stand still. Okay, we'll do our scorpion or our dolphin. Let's take a deep breath to lengthen the spine. Find more space in between the vertebrae. Exhale, press the feet down, engage the core, keep the core engaged. So you can try the scorpion. I can show the forearm scorpion this time. So hands down our forearm scorpion, or remember, you can go for dolphin pushing the hips back. If you're going for the forearm scorpion, keep the lower belly in, gaze forward. You can bring one leg up or jump up with both legs. Feet on the wall, legs up, point the feet, gaze at the wall. Push the chest towards, well, away from the wall, pull the shoulder blades away from the head and push 25, 24, 23, 22, 1, 20, 19, 18, 17, 16, 15, 14, keep the lower belly, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, and 1. Legs together, legs pointed, find some air time, and then slowly push to come out. Good job. Stand still. Okay, we'll do three drop backs. So one arm's distance from the wall or come closer. Remember, you can work with any drill that worked for you. If you feel any lower back discomfort, really uh, engage the deep core muscles. So again, I'll show it from the wall, with the wall. So one arm's distance from the wall, feet hips distance apart or wider. Press down into the feet, suck lower belly. Inhale, the arms up, reach up. And exhale, head back. Bring the hands to the wall. You can stay here, pick up the heels and push, or you can walk the hands down. Maybe you come halfway down, maybe all the way down. Wherever you are, stay and breathe. And then slowly you come up. The less you use the hands, the better, because eventually we don't want to use hands. Breathe in a standing Shavasana. We'll do two more. So if you're using the wall, the reason that I say that um, you can lift the heels is so that you have some more access to the pelvis. When you go to the back bend, you want to find this posterior pelvic tilt. If you press the feet down, the heels down, then it's easy to basically anteriorly rotate and push pressure into the, pull pressure into the lower back. But anterior rotation is not back, but it's just that you need to keep the lower belly in and lift up and eventually lose that anterior pelvic tilt. So if the heels are down, maybe you'll be more limited with the pelvis movement. If you want to try with the heels down, just make sure that again, you're sending the sits bones down and you're opening up. So number two of three, so second to last. If you want, you can try with, an, with starting with an anterior pelvic tilt. So again, use the wall or don't use the wall. I'll show you uh, the variation of the wall, but you can bring the hands to the wall. So starting with an anterior pelvic tilt, pull the lower belly in. Inhale, pick up the chin, pull the shoulders back. Reach the arms up and exhale, head back, hands back. So starting with an anterior pelvic tilt, then we start losing the tilt. So posterior, push the hands, the feet down. Feel the glutes working. Four, three, four, two, and one. Press to come up. So remember, you can do it with the wall, you can walk down or you can drop back. Once you're done, stand still. Okay, last one, very last one. So whichever one you liked out of these drills, the important thing is to really engage through the back to open up the front of the body. So maybe use the wall, maybe go for a, a drop back. When you're ready, just go for it.
Okay, so when we are done, we'll come down to lying on our back. We have some 10 minutes left, so we'll wind down. At this point, there's the opportunity of doing wheel poses and anything that's in your practice. So if you want to just do your practice, if you have more time, then go for it. Otherwise, we'll do a couple of twists to open the upper back. So bring the arms by your sides in a T. Bring the knees up, flex the feet, and then bring the knees to one side. So we're lifting the hips to the side, to the left, and we're bringing the knees to the right. So that from the hips to the head, we're one straight line. Then you can bring your head to the left, pull the shoulder blades down the back, and breathe into the chest. Inhale and open up the chest, keeping the lower belly in. And exhale, send the sits bones away from you, lengthen the lower back. Inhale, open up the chest a bit more. And exhale, pull the shoulder blades down, twist a bit more. Inhale deeply. And exhale, pull lower belly in, bring the knees in, bring the hips to the other side. And then bring the knees down, flex the feet and gaze at the other side, bend the knees. So knees to the left, hips in the same line as the head, pull the shoulder blades down the back, extend your arms, and inhale from the sits bones all the way to the crown of the head. Exhale. Inhale into the chest. And exhale. Inhale. And exhale, pull the lower belly in, bring the knees back to the chest. Okay, so bring the legs up, straighten the legs. You can flex or point the feet. What's important is to keep the legs active. Arms by your sides, open up the palms, and then bring the feet to the right. Palm, gaze at the left, and then bring the legs up. Inhale, and exhale, feet to the left. Inhale, up, and exhale to the right. Maybe the feet don't come all the way down, just go in that direction. Inhale up and exhale, feet towards the left hand. Keep the lower belly in and keep the legs straight. Five more on each side. Keep the legs straight, legs active. Four more, keep the lower belly in and the lower back close to the ground. So keep the lower back close to the ground. Two more. And last one, inhale back to center. Exhale to the right hand, keep the legs straight, keep the lower back close to the ground. Inhale back up and exhale to the left. Keep the legs straight, inhale back up. Bend the knees, grab the knees with your hands, head to knees. Use your knees to push up. Inhale into the chest, pull the shoulder blades down the back. And exhale, send the seat bones away from your lower back to the ground. Knees closer to the chest. Inhale, push the knees up, but use the hands to resist. And exhale, push the seat bones away from you. Very well. Extend the arm, the legs out. Lie down, Shavasana. Relax the body completely. Relax the eyebrows, relax the jaw. Relax the engagement of the belly, allow the abdomen to flow freely. If you feel any discomfort in the lower back, bend the knees and bring the knees together. You can always lie on your side or lie face down. For the next minute or two, just surrender completely. Let go. Surrender to stillness.
gently. Gently bring your awareness back to your breath, back to the healing quality of the breath. And watch as your breath flows inside the body. Watch how it carries the effects of the practice throughout the body. Watch as your inhale allows the belly button to float up, the belly to get filled up with energy, with vitality, with strength. And then as you naturally exhale, how that strength goes out to the whole body, to all corners of the body. Inhale and inhale more air into the belly. Deep, deep inhale. Exhale, send that energy to your hands, to your feet. Feel it at the tips of the fingers, at the tips of the toes. Inhale and find movement in the fingers, in the toes. Slowly waking up the body, moving the wrists, moving the ankles. Move your head from side to side. Massage the back of your head. Inhale your arms overhead. So really reach long through the arms, reach long through the legs. Now eventually find a seated position. You can come to one side and use your hands to carefully come up. Find a gentle way to find your comfortable seat. There's no rush. And there's no need to open the eyes unless you choose to. Send your sit bones back. Pull the lower belly in. Reach up through the chest, your open heart. Pull the shoulders back, the shoulder blades down. You can extend the arms. Bring the thumbs and index fingers together. Stretch the rest of the fingers and place the back of the palms on the knees. Inhale from your root to the crown of the head. Relax the muscle of the face, exhale through the nose. Inhale from the root all the way up to the crown of the head. And exhale through the nose, feel how the energy of the practice settles in your body and then inhale all the way up to the crown of the head and exhale keep the integrity of the body feel a sense of groundedness relax your elbows bring your palms to your heart inhale deeply and exhale allow the head to bow down to the hands It's important to stay with our heart open, even if it feels more vulnerable. An open chest is what allows us to receive. So stay receptive, stay receptive to grace, stay receptive to everything life has to offer. We'll finish our practice with Namaste as an indication that's, that what's inside all of us is the same. I bow to you, I see you. Namaste. Namaste. Thank you for practicing through any platform. Uh, as I've already explained, these videos will be available on Instagram. It will still be on for 24 hours and then I save it on my phone. So hopefully I can upload it on YouTube and it can always be there. So feel free to watch those again, which to practice again, it's important to stay strong, to stay sane, and feel free to come tomorrow. Tomorrow we're doing uh, routines and different rituals. So we'll learn different breaths, different ways to calm down and different ways to cope with life, especially nowadays that everything is crazy. If you have any requests, let me know. Otherwise, hope to see you soon. Goodbye. Bye, thank you. Thank you, Alex. <laughs> You're welcome. Thanks, bye. Ciao. <laughs> Good job, everyone.